Okay, well, well cheers. Cheers. And thank you for being here, Candy no, thank Roll. Thank you for having me. Um, well, I was mm -hmm. listening to your music the, that day in Gilded. You give me the card. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, and I was said, okay, okay, it's blues. I like blues a lot. And I just came here and started to listen. And I really love the Demon, Demon Blues song. I like a lot. Awesome. Yeah. I, I never see you on live in Guild. Um, but I hope hope so I'll soon. be there February fifth. Okay. You have already the day. Yeah, we're gonna Perfect. do the early show. Okay. Perfect. With this new I'm gonna be with uh, Alex Flock. Okay. Um so it'll just be a little duo and we'll be uh, showcasing songs from Demon Blue Z P. Okay. And we'll actually be showcasing some brand new songs as well. Okay. Cool. And well, I know that you are from Ontario. Mm -hmm. And how was your like approach of the first time to the music? Uh... Well, when I was younger, it was really accessible music and singing. So I kind of grew up singing a lot, and my family was really musical. My sister was a singer, so we used to sing a lot. And um, my mom constantly like pushed me to. You know, oh, sing, 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 sing for them, sing for them. Okay. So um, I got a lot of experience through that. And, you know, like my grandfather was like a accordion player, piano player, kind of okay. like. So we come from family. Yeah. Oh. So, so it was always kind of like from a young age instilled in me to sing. And um, I used to love country music. So I used to sing like Shania Twain and like all the time. Okay. <laughs> so that was like a huge yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, okay, she's doing the Shania Twain thing or they're doing the Shania Twain thing. Um, so that was, uh, that's basically how it started. And then as I got older, I started becoming more interesting, more interested in acting. And um, I did this one, like I used to do competitions for like karaoke competitions, singing competitions, things okay. like that. And uh, I used to do pretty well in them. And then when I moved to Vancouver, I had a chance to kind of have a new start. So I didn't want people to know I was a singer because I felt like singing was such a natural thing to me that okay. I really wanted people to see me as an actor. Okay. I don't know what happened there in the audio, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I, and I don't know what that was about. Uh, I think it was just the grass is greener on the other side sort of a situation. So when I moved out here, I was like, I can sing, but it was honestly something I wasn't fostering. So okay. I kind of started fostering the acting um, tools, okay. I guess, a little bit more. How long you been here in Vancouver? I moved here in 2010. 2010. Yeah, so I guess about 13 years. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a while ago, yeah. yeah. So um, when I moved here... I did, um, you know, a couple of competitions for singing. Uh, I did a couple of musicals. You know, it was always kind of something in the back pocket that I could pull out. And then it was um, when I started working at Guilt and Co. in 2016, uh, where I met Tanya Ganaba and uh, all the other, all these amazing musicians. And you know, it was oh, I I actually love to sing, and this is something that I'm really passionate about. But after all those years of not really fostering it, it kind of, I kind of, um, I lost, I, I would lose my voice really easily. Like my, my singing muscles weren't strong anymore. Okay. So um, in the back of my mind, I was kind of dabbling like, okay, I, I, it would be nice to still do this, like even if just as a hobby. And um, it wasn't until last year when uh well not last like was it last year like 2021 2021 2021 yeah. when i was working at guilt and co in around august and i started to think about singing in a different way like okay i'm gonna really i'm gonna really do this like it kind of felt like um like uh like an energy or a force kind of just pushed me okay. like you have to do this and you can't wait anymore and you know like this is just it's your time it's your time to do it and you got to do it now so then I kind of um like like that now or never, no? Yeah, exactly. So and you know, my mom, I guess I can blame her because uh she's always like, Oh, you should just be a singer. You should just be a singer, you know, like you should just 
hey, I, kn- I know you like this acting thing, but you know, you're such a good singer. You should be a performer on stage. <laughs> so she'd always kind of like instill yeah. that in the back of my mind. And uh, it was about last year. I was kind of like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I, maybe it wasn't for myself so much as it was for her. But I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for her. <laughs> and slowly and slowly it started to become more about doing it for me. Um, so I, I think it's the way it have to be. Like yeah. doing it for you. And not for nobody else. And I mean, like, I've been writing songs for since I was, you know, uh, probably I'll say about 16 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So ever since I was, like, young. So I've been uh, writing songs, and then it was only about last year. Because I, I was working at Guilt Co., and then I actually got COVID. So then I actually s took some time away due to stress and anxiety and, you know, depression yeah, I, I and all. I saw you things. like uh, two times or three times there. <laughs> it was just due to all of the things, especially that like kind of COVID um, highlights, you know, it's yeah. like that depression kind of. And it was during that like time where, you know, it was Delta and everyone who gets COVID has to lock yeah. down and lock away and not talk yeah. to anybody or see anybody. So that's when I started to... Um, I got, I got pretty depressed. Like just the lack of human connection really, really started to seep into my soul. And out of that came the blues for the first time for me. And I just started writing these blues songs. And then it was almost kind of like once I figured out the key to how to kind of formulate that pattern that song so you never sing you never play you never like uh uh have a close approach to the blues and then no. just burst out yeah like it was like i've always loved rock music and i've always loved glam rock music and the songs that i was writing were just really um they're a confusing genre they weren't really a, a, an actual straightforward genre And I didn't really like love, love them. I was just like, okay, cool. You're writing a song. That's, that's mm -hmm. interesting. You know, maybe one day you'll continue to foster this and it will get better. So then it was kind of like, once I wrote that first blues song, it was like, I think I figured something out. Well, which is the name of the song? It's, uh, I guess I called it the Delta Blues. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't released that song yet. Do you have another one that's different um, image? Uh, it's blue color. Classification. Yeah, that's a good one too. Thank you. Yeah, I wrote that one last uh, November. That was kind of like leading off of this, like, you know, I'd get into these moods and I just hear in my head, I'd be like, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. That, that. And yeah. I'd be like, hey, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? What am I feeling? And the first thing that come to mind, I'd write that. And then I'd be like, okay, I'll write that again. Okay, now, now develop more. Like, what But is But you're this? like creating the, the um, beats or the, the music in your head and then like write, writing there? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, I will uh, have the feeling. Usually it'll, you know, there's a couple different approaches, but one of the common ones is I'll have a feeling like, um, you know, That, that I was, <laughs> I was just, you know, I think it was kind of like, I'm so unstable, I'm so unstable. And I was like, oh, that's really funny. I'm going to write that. So, da, 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 I'm so unstable. And then I was like, oh, this is fun. And then it kind of just kept kind of just riffing on that idea. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I got like two verses and, you know, the main part of the song sorted. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a couple, maybe a week or two later that I kind of revisited it and found the, the hook, like the, the chorus, you know, like the okay. blue collar yeah. classification. Um, but that is the main approach, like kind of just, just, uh, thinking about like deep down inside, what am I feeling? What are the words? What is the metaphor of, you know, or the analogy of like how this relates to a bigger picture, like something that maybe I could explain The way that I'm feeling in a way yeah. that other people can kind of easily pick up. Okay. The, and this, um, this album, well, EP or album, uh, burning, uh, late 2021, just with the, like Delta COVID and everything, you start like, because I saw you recording with, in some studio and that was the time that you would record this EP. So I rep recorded this EP mostly in June of okay. 2022. Okay. Um, just recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, January 2022 was when I, I cut the demo. I cut that at the Space Studios with uh, Timmy Boombap. Okay. And um, 
uh, I think it's Baptone, Baptone Productions. And then uh, once we cut the demo, I released uh, or I submitted that to Factor uh, for a yeah. grant. Yeah, yeah. So then once I received the grant, which I didn't find out until after I was already kind of like starting to record the album. Okay. So I actually worked with a producer, Eduardo Cristo. Um, and he has, he mainly does a lot of things out of his studio, but we tracked a lot of stuff at Hipposonic Studios for Demon Blues. So we did that in June. And then it was, I think, August and September where we did some pickups okay. to just straighten out everything. So is mainly in the last year that, you know, like about a year ago was when I was really like writing these songs. Yeah. And then like around May, June was when we started the pre-production, post-production or pre-production and then main production. How it works when uh, a person that sings and do you want to record the music and the, all the like create all the song, like with all the instrument in instruments. So you just go with the producer and I have the lyrics, I know how to sing it, and I, I want a guitar and I want this and how, how it works. So with me and Alex Flock, he's like a co-creator. So I would say like he's pretty much the other 50% of these songs. Um, like, for example, the other day he came by and we ran through some other ideas that we're going to be showcasing soon. So I write these songs and I have like a beat or drum beat or like kind of just like a pace a timing yeah. in my head. And I kind of have like the more and more I'm writing them, the more and more I kind of can hear a little bit more specifics when it yeah. comes to music. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's it is hard because I'm not the best at music theory, and I mean I play the harmonica a, a little cool. bit, but I just uh, buy one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so it was hard for me to convey to him what I exactly wanted without really understanding the language to express like in okay, well maybe you can like I would pretend that I'd know the yeah. language of yeah, music yeah. jargon right now, but like, Oh, can you start at a half note and we're going to drop it down from a C to yeah. like, that's not something I'm, so yeah. I'd be more like, I think we want to start at like this note right here. Maybe we could go up and down. So okay. with him, I'll show him the song, the melody, give him the space and go, I'm thinking about, you know, and he just picks it up. Like he'll hear the song and he'll kind of just start playing along with it. And okay. then we'll just kind of like shift yeah. and move and groove until mm -hmm. we're kind of going like okay. a good uh, music producer right yeah yeah so he's he's like a co-creator i guess you'd say and um yeah so i bring in the top melody and the lyrics and i can hold on to those for a while and then once i meet up with you know the collaborator we yeah. kind of work it out together and um after the songs you know created kind of just do adjustments along the way of Like for Demon Blues, you know, we were in his space and he came up with that solo where that progression was like, and I was like, oh my God, he was like, and I was just like, oh, that's it. That's, and I was like, that's, that's what we got to do every time. Like that's got to stay in the song because that just is like my favorite part of Demon Blues. Yeah, yes. For me, it was a great song. It was like, cool. And I know the person that made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, honestly, that that's, I think, one of my favorite songs off the EP, for sure. Yeah. And I was so happy that we got to really give it so much energy and create such an epic kind of, you know, anthem, yeah. this mental health awareness anthem. Is is a uh, five-song EP? Six. Six. Yeah. The last song is uh, no music. Well, it's uh, more of like a, like a more of a... Um, vocal vocal performance mm. and how is uh how do you um, work with factor to get the that grant and you can like produce more how, so, how it works that so they have a grant that came out in february which was i think it was for two thousand two thousand dollars was the grant to uh produce a song or you know Okay. What you want to do. And I um, pitched them my concept for my EP. And, you know, like I've, I have a lot of songs that I was working on in the last year. And uh, Demon Blues was like my follow up idea. Okay. So I, th I pitched this one idea. And then after I pitched the, sent off the grant, I was like, 
you know what? I'm not going to do that album. I'm going to start with my follow up. I'm going to start with the thing that I think is the best because I'm growing and as I grow, things will just get better. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to hold out. I'm going to start with what I think is my favorite of the, the best of the best right now that I can kind of cherry pick to kind of make a really solid piece of work that kind of mm -hmm. feels, you know, cohesive and flows fluently with each other. So then as soon as I sent in the grant, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that project. I'm going to do this project, but everything else stays the same. <laughs> so um, I just basically had to fill out a grant and send them in the demo and give them kind of like an idea of what I was looking to create and why I was looking to create that. Everything in Factor, you have to send it via email or you have to send a video, or you have to send a test uh, or like a sample of your music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think we sent um, video and we uh, also sent, uh, I'm just like asking my, my, my partner in crime because uh, he helps me with all of the um, digital kind of, okay. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm like, I don't know how to get these packages together. Yeah. But yeah, so I think it was a video, the song, the demo, and um, just like any photos or videos or multimedia cool. stuff like that. That's super like... Um I think there's an amazing thing here in Canada that you can go with the government. This factory, I think it's federal, it's from all Canada. Mm -hmm. But for BC, I think there's a Creative BC, right? Yes, yes, Creative BC. Um, that they do, a, they also do a grant that I uh, filled out for last year. And this year, knock on wood, maybe I'll get <laughs> <Okay>. it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And. And do you are planning for a uh, video music for that EP? Yeah, so um, I would really like to start working on, I've got two music video concepts in mind, one for Blue Collar Classification yeah. and one for Demon Blues. Yeah. So I am hoping that I will receive that Creative BC grant <laughs> so I could fund these music videos. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, what I'm working on is we're actually creating these... Um, Kind of, they're a little bit of a mix between a short film and a mix between a music video. So each song, and um, okay. it's a Candy Roar official. I have three of them released so far. Candy Roar official on TikTok. Okay. Um, so I've got three released and I've got three coming. And that will be basically the storyline of the concept of the album. Okay. So you can kind Follow of follow you. along with the... Um, base you can follow along with what i'm trying with the story i'm trying to tell it's a little okay. bit more like laid out so you can see the story clearly yeah um and then once those are all released i'll be probably releasing them on youtube i'll put them on my website and i'll probably also be releasing them on ig yeah cool because uh, i i think it's when i i see you filming right it was with the guy with the mask and yeah. the handsy hat Yeah, so that's um that was we were doing episode three and episode four oh that God. day. So we've released episode three. Episode okay. four is done. I'm just waiting to release that one, and then we're just working on episode five and episode six, and then we'll have them all ready to release to kind of fill the whole story of the journey that Candy Roar takes on this okay. in this EP. Nice, very nice, and then, well, hope hope so that you can get the creative BC. Well, that uh, video. Music. Yeah, that would be really cool. I mean, I you never know with these places, but you know, I, you gotta have faith and believe in yourself. And yeah. definitely, I'm I'm here to do that. So <laughs> yeah. And you're playing in Guild next February 18th. On February 5th, I'm playing 5th. at Guild and Co. And on February 4th, I'm actually doing a show. I'm opening for a couple of out of town bands. I'm opening for Bad Magic. And Dealer's Choice. I think Bad Magic is from Victoria. Dealer's Choice is from Chilliwack. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we're doing a show at the Wise Hall. So this is going to be a ticketed event. And you can get the tickets on the link in my website. Or, okay. you know, I've got a story posted. But I'm going to be getting on, on top of all those links. If you go to candyroar.com, the link okay. for the tickets are there. I think they're 25 
20, twenty dollars. They're twenty dollar tickets. So, uh, but that's great because you get to see three different bands. Yeah, and it's like a great price. Absolutely, and it's just going to be like, you know, you get a little taste of Candy Roar. It's, it's she, <laughs> we're opening the show for everyone, so you okay. know we're going to be be able to sample a couple of our songs off of Demon Blues. Right. So really excited to uh, yeah. meet some new music- musicians, and uh, you know. Get get on stage with uh, some other acts and be a part of this show that's coming up. Cool. And um, uh, where where you playing with the uh, in Guild is like a uh, your band. You bring some like invite musicians. Is like you have your regular guitarists and yeah. So um, Alex and I usually play a duo, so it's pretty intimate. Um, I did a CD release in October for the for the EP and EP release. And that's when I had uh, Jean Say Le Duge on bass and we had Aaron Hamlin on drums and we had Harvey Paris on the keys. So these are people that I would probably be working with again. Um, you know, the, we originally had Nick James on drums for the tracks at okay. Hipposonic. So, so the drummer is kind of an interchangeable position. Um, yeah. But I think like, you know, as far as like, guitar it's alex flock pretty much all the way and and uh if we ever need a bassist we'll probably be always knocking on jean say's door so yeah. we have like our our yeah. kind of a group but not an official like solidified yeah, like, band yeah. i would say me and alex are like the band <laughs> you are full um how do you say like prepared now like you have ap you have the website you have everything to go uh, and it's like amazing for artists that That I know that you're already seeing and then you're having like your career going on, but now I, I, I see you like like a full go in with this. Yeah, like um when I decided to take a break from guilt, I was like, Well, I really need to do something serious, you know? Uh I need to whatever I'm doing, I need to do it fully and not yeah. just kind of maybe Half kind right, of whatever, yeah. you know? So it's really just been it's been um Full, full steam ahead, and I'm not stopping yeah, anytime that soon. That is the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, especially with the blues, right? Yeah. Trains, full steam ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So I've just been, I've been, when I'm not writing songs, I'm, you know, getting ready to perform. When I'm not getting ready to perform, I'm getting ready to record. And when I'm not getting ready to record, I'm, I'm doing something behind the camera to kind of create awareness, mm. more content, um, mm. you know doing photo shoots with silk bone studios, um, creating any type of content to co kind of like bring more awareness, bring more attention yeah, to my page, bring more followers on board so we could get a bigger audience so yeah. we can get, you know, more people out at the shows. It's just like a never ending, you know, there's always, and I love it because you have to move, right? You have to like make stuff and create a stuff and, Have you say like uh, do you take your rest uh your days off for from guilt and you need to make something creative and go with that Yeah and I feel like when I had my days off from guilt I'd have to sleep because I'm so I get so exhausted because yeah, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I'm not a workhorse like I'm not designed I'm not built to work hard <laughs> <laughs> in in that kind of a sense of the word work hard, like I can yeah. do it and I, I get, I, I get into it. Like I really yeah. do like it, but it does take so much energy out of me that I'm, I'm left without any energy to create the things that kind of come naturally to me. So yeah. having all this extra time to create and, and it's great because I have like, I, I get through phases, right? So I'll be like, okay, I'm in a phase right now where I need to work with my hands or I'm in a phase where I need to work with my brain or I'm in a phase where I need yeah. to shut off. So it's yeah. like I'm always going through a different phase that needs to be a certain type of creative to kind of get to the next state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really great that, you know, you know, it's either, you know, creating masks for these videos or, you know, doing these makeup uh kind of like looks or planning what the next yeah, stage that's your, show. like your brand, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's um my brand is like it's really like, you know, blues rock, but when you look at blues as a genre of music, it's really known for being pared back. You know, the look, the the feel of it's very pared back as far as aesthetics are driven. Mm. You know, it's very like basic, you know, you're not going to see really elaborate 
you know, looks with no, blues. No, you uh, don't. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the glam rock comes in because yeah. I'm such a huge fan of glam rock and Mark Bolin, the front man of T-Rex, David Bowie, uh, mm. Lou Reed, like these kind of mm. artists have inspired me from a young age. And I feel like, you know, why can't the blues be more glam, more glamorous, <laughs> yeah. you know, why can't yeah. we? So I'm trying to tie that together because it's just, it makes it so much more fun for me. Yeah. Cool. And the next year, your plans are full, so, full uh, concerts? Play. So, yeah, hopefully in the summertime, I will be getting to do a couple festivals. Uh, yeah, of course. So I've already got some aligned, some applications sent out for different festivals. Summer without COVID. Yeah. So you will open everything. Yeah. Festivals and everything. And on the side, we like, the last summer was crazy. We ended up acquiring these vintage trailers. So we're going to have this little trailer rental business on the side, which is also great for if we are touring okay. and just hop in the little vintage, you know, Skylark and take off. Nice. Um, it was great. Everyone, everyone in the band gets a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, hoping to do some festivals. I've got some songs lined up that I want to release because this year I want to focus on releasing a couple singles. Okay. Um, but ultimately the work of this year is going to be bringing as much attention towards Demon Blues, the EP as possible. Yeah. Um, now because we released it in October there, it actually kind of put us in a full circle year of grace for the Juno Awards. Now, oh, because I've cool. got the Factor Canada grant that actually um, creates an eligibility for me to enter into the Juno. Nice, you know? very nice. Though. So I could have done it this year when the album was released, but also I could do it next year. And I'm going to just be working to gain a lot of attention, gain a lot of traction for this okay. album so that I can, um, you know, submit it. I will have a better position, right? Absolutely. Just trying to create more awareness create more buzz, create more streams, views, saves, yeah. likes, follows, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the um, applications for the festivals are just BC or you're like trying to go to another province? I haven't thought outside of the province yet, but I think like honestly, uh, this summer we were so lucky we got to go for a cross-country trip. So we got to travel all the way to Ontario and back um, on the road, drove there. And there were so many amazing places that I was kind of keeping my eyes open. Like, okay, where would I like to play? And yeah, honestly, I think some of the, the places that stood out to me were obviously like Winnipeg. They have a great music scene. They have such okay. a huge like culture, arts movement. So I love okay. that. And um, Thunder Bay in my hometown would obviously be a place I would be mm. interested in playing. They have the Blues Fest in the summertime. So that's something I, I can consider long term. Um, but I think this year we've only so far applied to BC, but we're definitely keeping our eyes open for anything that's available, anything mm -hmm. that comes our way, um, looking to play out like in the Kootenays or like the Okanagan Valley, like areas that are kind of remote, but still yeah. really close yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah. Um, it's just like a, well, like a few hours driving. Mm -hmm. And then Alberta, of course, is I think a great place for my music because it really, I think, uh, my music kind of has a little bit more of a small town vibe being from a small town. It's kind of like I write from my past experiences in a way and yeah. write from where I came from. So it's like, it, it, it is hard to push this small town music in this big city of Bring Vancouver. Bring the blues back, please. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of the thing. And being like an indigenous person, indigenous non-binary artist, yeah. you don't really see those us artists creating this style of music when yeah. it is really one of the first types of music that was created, you know, it was before rock and roll was before, yeah. you know, all this other stuff. And, um, I was watching this documentary called uh, rumble and it's about like the Indians who rock the world. And it's a little bit goes into detail about like, you know, native American heritage and indigenous, uh, artists that we maybe didn't know necessarily were indigenous, like Jimi Hendrix, you know, having indigenous mm -hmm. roots. So just kind of like going into this story about these, these care, like these, these artists, yeah. um, and kind of a little bit even back before the blues started, how, you know, like my culture, we have that drum beat, right? Drums are a huge part of indigenous yeah. culture. 
And uh, in in this documentary, well, the, they're like, how do you say like the percussion is, is uh, instruments? It's like the drum beat, you know, or yeah. the heartbeat of kind of life. Yeah. Uh, and then what I didn't realize was that the one reason why the guitar became so popular when it did in like the 1900s, 1920s with blues was because drums were actually banned, oh. and completely illegal, because oh. drums create that that warrior like we're gonna get you know like it kind of calls people together it kind of yeah. gets people riled up it gets people yeah. rowdy so they had to like you know people that were using drums for ceremonious purposes they were using drums to kind of um heal and yeah. cover them recover as a as a as a you know as a culture um as a community and they were silenced. So the guitar became, mm. okay, now it's a guitar. Now we're going to make this thing wail, you know? <laughs> so it's like that wailing guitar where we, we think of the blues, you know, like a lot of that was rooted in indigenous culture. All right. I didn't know that. What is the name of that? It's called Rumble, the Indians Rumble. who rock the world. Okay. But yeah, it's such a powerful documentary. In yeah, it. I need to watch it. Absolutely. Especially if, um, what is it? Um, Ray, Link Ray, the musician who made the song Rumble. That's like uh, the, I'm sure you've heard the song. It's like, do, 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 Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, so, so there's like, that's just like one of those songs that inspired so many rock stars of our time. You know, like they heard this song and they were just like, oh, like, oh. I gotta, I gotta do that. I gotta be a rock star. Okay. Hey, I have a question. I don't know. Like, um, do you think like, uh, for factor or BC creative, do you have like, um, advantage for your position being an indigenous person or a non-binary person? They like try to, um, how, how do you say like spread the money to all the people? I feel like in a world that is designed to be uh, in a world where I am technically at a constant disadvantage. Or like a minority. Yeah, yeah. As a minority with a constant disadvantage in society, being non-binary, being queer, being indigenous, being disabled. You know, these are things that have always kind of worked against me. So when you do have grants like that, where you can't, where they do try to help the disadvantaged, yeah. the minorities, uh, I do feel like it gives me an equal playing field. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as a disadvantaged minority, when you are applying for these types of grants, I don't know if you get more of an advantage or you're actually on an equal level. That finally, great. yeah, yeah. So I think that it's. Cool. I wouldn't really say it's an advantage, but it's it's equal playing field. Like you, yeah, that's. That's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always been difficult to, uh, like, the world is opening up and things are changing and we're starting mm -hmm. to see, you know, a lot of the errors of our ways from the past and trying to um, reconcile, yeah. bring truth to, uh, to our history. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's important that we see it for what it is. It's see it as fairness, see it, see it as equality. Because when you are living in a world where you're constantly, you know, on the lowest level to compete, to be able yeah. to be placed a little higher so that you can compete with the people yeah. that are always kind of been held a little bit higher than you. Yeah, I think with, that's important. With advantage. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Cool. So what is next for Candy Roar? Um, so I, I, I better check again with her, but I think I'll be doing a, Under the Harlem Moon Cabaret in January. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be working on that with Crystal DeSantos. Yeah. And uh, uh, if we end up not you doing... You are mixing, like, uh, doing a mixing with blues and... She's more like singing She does, jazz, like, soul, soul kind of neo-soul. Yeah, right? yeah. So, um, you know, she does that cabaret every first month of... Every Tuesday, every first Tuesday of the month. So mm -hmm. there's been a couple shows where I've come down and kind of, like, guested with her. So she kind of just introduced all different types of guests of all different types of genres, all different okay. types of walks of life, so that she can kind of showcase, uh, you know, up-and-coming emerging artists such as myself. 
Okay, so cool. yeah, so I'm going to be doing that. And then we got those shows in February. Cool. And I think that there's a lot more up my sleeve as for what's coming up, but it's not necessarily solidified yet. So, and you have new music coming too, right? You I say do, like yeah. maybe one or two singles more. Um, well, the other day, me and Alex, we chopped out about four songs. So I've got, uh, definitely two singles that I want to release. And I've got something fun just for, you know, to throw out. Okay. And then we've got um, something special, some some special little love ballad that we're going to be uh, showcasing on the February 5th show at Guild Co. A little, a little okay. love song. Cool. Cool. Um, another thing that I want to ask you, like, um, you are filming your live shows? I do film my live shows. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My my partner in crime, Silkbone Studios, he uh, is a multimedia manager of sorts. So he okay. does definitely a lot of photography. And every time I do a live show, you know, I like to get as much footage as I can. You know, course, it really comes in handy. More than like you're like releasing a new EP and like you're a new new release artist. So Yeah, I, I actually like when I first started, I was kind of like, You know, I'd record my rehearsals, watch them back, and then I'd go and do the show live, and then I'd watch it back, and I'd kind of go, okay, just to kind of see what the audience... I was, like, a little <laughs> bit meticulous, you know? It's very, yeah. like, okay... No, it's just to share, like, we share with the people, or do you have your uh, YouTube channel? Yes, I do. It's Candy yeah. Roar on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. And I've got, like, a bunch of different performances from a bunch of different shows, which, you know, because we have so much footage, we're just constantly adding more and yeah. more to that. Yeah, just to see the live show when... if. If somebody misses it, like, yeah, you can watch it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, live streams, there's, I think... Uh, you're this, making live streams? The EP release, we live streamed that, I think, uh -huh. on IG. So uh, so that everyone could kind of tune in if they didn't get a chance to come down. But mm -hmm. that's something that I like to do every once in a while, kind of spur the moment, sort of. Yeah. Just, okay, let's just go live tonight. Yeah, okay. But also to send all those videos to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> course <laughs> yeah um your social media is candy roar everywhere yeah candy roar uh on instagram candy roar.com candy roar on tiktok or you can go to my candy roar official on tiktok which is a newer a newer um a newer account that okay. i've just started to kind of do solely focusing on music and the release of the album Okay. My other TikTok is just kind of like like you bizarre weirdo stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hot takes, okay. hot takes and pancakes. <laughs> and YouTube Candy Roar and yeah, IG uh, TikTok. I, I'm on Twitter at Candy Twitter. Roar. Yeah. I think okay. it's Candy Roar. It might be Carly Palmer. Um, but yeah, basically everything's Candy Roar with a K, K A N D Y. Okay, mm -hmm. Candy. Uh, something else that you want to add to this? Um. I guess I just want to thank you for having me out tonight. Yeah. It's been so much fun. Yeah. Thank you for coming and share the blues with us and yeah. trying to, how do you say, revive the blues in the city. Absolutely. Revive yeah. the blues. I think, uh, you know, getting out of the last couple of years, which were pretty dark for a lot of us and especially just learning to live differently. And, you know, sometimes when you change your lifestyle that drastically, yeah. you start to find out more about yourself, more about yeah. things you can handle and things you yeah. can't handle. And, you know, I don't know if I'm speaking for myself when I say that, you know, I, you know, there was a lot of dark moments where we weren't really a hundred percent sure what was going to happen. And I think out of that, a lot of, um, a lot of blues were formed and I think we all have kind of felt a lot of, of we, un, we all understand, you know, like I, I, I took a, took a Bee Gees song and I think there was a lyric in it. It was like, um, it's like a staying alive. And it's like, we all understand the blues. We got never before we got nothing to lose. So it's like, you know, so I think that's something that we can all relate to. Yeah. Maybe not so much as, you know, when the blues were created. But pain and suffering is pain and suffering um, in any dose. Yeah, and, and everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you, got, if you got the blues, you know, sometimes the best thing to do is just let it out. Let it out. Be creative. Sing a song. Music. Music helps your mind. It helps your body. It helps your spirituality, your soul, your, soul, your emotions. You know, it's 
music is like the ultimate medicine. Yeah, exactly. So it's definitely Heals. been helping me out. <laughs> Heals your soul. Well, well cheers. Cheers. Kevin. Thank you for being here. Music and mezcal. Music and mezcal. Gracias, <laughs> señores.